A patient's arm vein feels rope-like and difficult to palpate. What is the safest next step? A. Apply extra pressure and attempt venipuncture. B. Select an alternative site such as the hand or forearm. C. Massage the vein until it softens. D. Use a larger gauge needle for better penetration. Answer, B. Rope-like veins may indicate sclerosis. Choosing an alternate site avoids complications like vein rupture and ensures better specimen quality. A phlebotomist accidentally punctures through a vein and blood begins to pool under the skin. What immediate action should be taken? A. Continue filling the tube. B. Apply pressure and stop the draw. C. Insert the needle deeper. D. Switch to a smaller tube. Answer, B. Pooling blood indicates a hematoma forming. The correct response is to stop immediately and apply pressure to prevent worsening. During a fasting glucose draw, the patient admits to drinking juice 10 minutes ago. What is the correct action? A. Proceed, but label the specimen non-fasting. B. Cancel the test and notify the provider. C. Proceed without changes. D. Switch to a different tube color. Answer, A. If fasting protocol is broken, the specimen may still be collected but must be labeled accurately for provider interpretation. Why should blood cultures be drawn before other tubes in the order of draw? A. To prevent air bubbles. B. To reduce contamination risk. C. To ensure quicker results. D. To improve platelet yield. Answer, B. Blood cultures are most vulnerable to contamination. Drawing them first reduces the chance of introducing additives or microbes from later tubes. A phlebotomist notices the patient's foreline is running in the same arm chosen for venipuncture. What is the best approach? A. Draw below the foresight. B. Draw from the opposite arm. C. Stop the fore and draw above it. D. Proceed as usual without changes. Answer. B. The opposite arm should always be used if possible. For fluids dilute blood, altering results if drawn from the same side. A patient refuses a venipuncture but the provider insists it must be collected. What is the phlebotomist's correct response? A. Persuade the patient until they agree. B. Restrain the patient and draw the sample. C. Respect the refusal and notify the provider. D. Collect from an alternate site without consent. Answer, C. Patients have the right to refuse. Phlebotomists must never force a draw, document refusal and notify the provider. A lavender top tube for CBC is clotted upon inspection. What is the most likely cause? A. The tube was underfilled. B. The tube was not inverted after collection. C. The needle gauge was too small. D. The specimen was stored incorrectly. Answer, B. EDTA tubes must be inverted 8 to 10 times to mix blood with the anticoagulant. Skipping this step causes clotting. Which of the following is the safest method to improve vein visibility? A. Slapping the venipuncture site. B. Warming the arm with a compress. C. Prolonging the tourniquet time. D. Massaging the vein with alcohol. Answer, B. Warm compresses promote vasodilation and make veins more prominent, without damaging the site or increasing hemoconcentration. A child requires a CBC and electrolyte panel. Which collection method is most appropriate? A. Heel stick. B. Finger stick with microtainers. C. Venipuncture using butterfly needle. D. Arterial puncture. Answer, C. For multiple tests requiring larger volume, a butterfly needle with venipuncture is safest for children, reducing trauma and providing adequate sample. If a specimen requires chilling, what is the correct handling? A. Place directly in a freezer at minus 20 degrees Celsius. B. Place in an ice water slurry immediately after collection. C. Keep at room temperature until transported. D. Store in a warm container to prevent hemolysis. Answer, B. 
Chilled specimens, like ammonia, lactic acid, must be placed in an ice water slurry to preserve stability until analysis. A phlebotomist collects a CBC in a lavender tube but forgets to gently invert it. What is the most likely outcome? A. Clotted sample. B. Hemolyzed plasma. C. Elevated potassium. D. Low hematocrit. Answer, A. Lavender tubes contain EDTA, an anticoagulant that requires inversion to mix with blood. Without proper mixing, clot formation occurs, making the CBC unusable. This highlights the importance of proper handling immediately after collection. During venipuncture, a patient reports numbness and shooting pain in the arm. What should the phlebotomist do first? A. Continue drawing blood quickly. B. Remove the needle immediately. C. Ask the patient to move their arm. D. Tighten the tourniquet. Answer, B. Sudden numbness or pain suggests nerve involvement. The safest action is to stop the procedure by removing the needle immediately to prevent nerve injury. Continuing could cause permanent damage. Which additive prevents coagulation by binding calcium ions? A. Heparin. B. Sodium citrate. C. Potassium oxalate. D. All of the above. Answer, D. Calcium is essential for clotting. Heparin inhibits clotting factors, citrate binds calcium, and oxalate precipitates calcium. Each works differently but achieves anticoagulation through calcium-related pathways. A blood culture is ordered. Which step is most critical before collection? A. Labeling the tube. B. Cleaning the venipuncture site with antiseptic. C. Applying the tourniquet. D. Selecting the correct color tube. Answer, B. Blood cultures must remain free from contamination. Proper site disinfection with antiseptic, e.g., chlorhexidine or iodine, is the most critical step to ensure accurate results. A patient requires a fasting glucose test. The phlebotomist notes the patient is eating a candy bar. What should the phlebotomist do? A. Draw the blood immediately. B. Ask the patient to finish the candy. C. Reschedule the test. D. Ignore it and continue. Answer, C. Fasting glucose requires at least 8 hours without food. Eating invalidates results. The test should be rescheduled to avoid inaccurate glucose levels. What is the primary risk of using an expired evacuated tube? A. Needle contamination. B. Incorrect additive to blood ratio. C. Tube cracking during draw. D. Higher infection risk. Answer, B. Expired tubes may lose vacuum and additive integrity. This causes improper blood-to-additive ratios, leading to unreliable test results or sample rejection. Which vein is most at risk of accidental arterial puncture? A. Median cubital. B. Basilic. C. Cephalic. D. Dorsal hand veins. Answer, B. The basilic vein lies close to the brachial artery and major nerves, making it the riskiest choice. The median cubital is preferred for safety and accessibility. A lavender top tube is underfilled. What test result is most likely affected? A. CBC. B. Point slash INR. C. Blood culture. D. Lipid panel. Answer, A. Underfilling EDTA tubes changes the blood-to-additive ratio, leading to false hematology values such as low hematocrit or abnormal cell counts. Which of the following is a preanalytical error? A. Improper centrifuge speed. B. Incorrect needle gauge. C. Patient not fasting. D. Clotting in a plasma tube. Answer, C. Preanalytical errors occur before testing, often due to patient preparation. A patient not fasting when required is a classic example, affecting glucose or lipid results. Which test requires a chain of custody form? A. Glucose tolerance test. B. Therapeutic Drug Monitoring C. Forensic Toxicology D. Electrolyte Panel Answer, C. 
Chain of custody ensures specimen integrity for legal cases, such as forensic drug or alcohol testing. This documentation prevents tampering or misidentification. A phlebotomist must collect a STAT electrolyte panel. Which tube is most appropriate? A. Lavender. B. Green. C. Gray. D. Blue. Answer, B. Electrolyte testing is performed on plasma or serum. Green tubes, lithium heparin, allow for quick turnaround because plasma can be tested without waiting for clotting. What is the maximum time blood should remain in a tourniquet before collection? A. 30 seconds. B. 60 seconds. C. 2 minutes. D. 5 minutes. Answer, B. Prolonged tourniquet use can cause hemoconcentration, altering lab values like potassium, calcium, and hematocrit. The maximum safe time is 60 seconds. What test requires collection in a tube protected from light? A. Bilirubin. B. Glucose. C. Sodium. D. Hemoglobin A1c. Answer, A. Bilirubin is light-sensitive and degrades with exposure, leading to falsely low results. The specimen should be collected in an amber tube or wrapped in foil. Which action can prevent hemolysis during venipuncture? A. Using a very small needle. B. Shaking the tube vigorously. C. Allowing alcohol to dry before puncture. D. Collecting through a hematoma. Answer, C. Wet alcohol can cause hemolysis when blood mixes with it. Allowing the site to dry prevents cell rupture and ensures sample integrity. Which test is most affected by hemolysis? A. Potassium. B. Cholesterol. C. Sodium. D. Calcium. Answer, A. Red blood cells contain high potassium. Hemolysis releases potassium into plasma, falsely elevating results. This can mislead providers into diagnosing hyperkalemia. Which of the following should be collected first in the order of draw? A. Blood culture. B. Serum tube. C. Lavender EDTA. D. Green heparin. Answer, A. Blood cultures are collected first to prevent contamination from additives in other tubes. This ensures accurate microbial detection. Which tube is used for coagulation studies? A. Green. B. Blue. C. Lavender. D. Gray. Answer, B. Light blue tubes contain sodium citrate, essential for coagulation testing like PT-INR and APTT. Proper fill is critical for valid results. A phlebotomist draws blood without verifying patient identity. What is the major risk? A. Needle injury. B. Lab rejection. C. Misdiagnosis. D. Hemolysis. Answer, C. Failing to confirm patient identity can lead to specimen mix-ups, resulting in misdiagnosis, wrong treatment, or medical errors. Patient ID is the most critical safety step. A glucose tolerance test requires multiple collections. What is the key requirement? A. Patient must walk between collections. B. Tubes must be inverted every 5 minutes. C. Patient must remain seated and not eat. D. Tubes must be placed on ice. Answer, C. The patient must remain seated and fasting except for the glucose drink. Activity or eating skews glucose metabolism, invalidating the test. A phlebotomist accidentally punctures an artery instead of a vein. What is the immediate sign? A. Slow, dark red blood flow. B. Bright red blood spurting. C. Blood clot formation. D. No blood return. Answer, B. Arterial blood is oxygen-rich and under pressure, causing bright red spurting. Venous blood is darker and flows steadily. Recognizing the difference prevents complications. Which additive is in a gray top tube? A. Sodium fluoride and potassium oxalate. B. EDTA. C. Sodium citrate. D. Heparin. Answer, A. 
Gray tubes contain sodium fluoride, preserves glucose, and potassium oxalate, anticoagulant. They are primarily used for glucose and lactate testing. A blood smear is prepared immediately after collection to prevent what? A. Clotting in the smear. B. Platelet clumping. C. Hemoconcentration. D. Hemolysis. Answer, B. Platelets tend to clump if smears are delayed, leading to false low platelet counts. Preparing smears immediately ensures even distribution. What is the main reason capillary punctures are not used for coagulation testing? A. Tissue fluid contamination. B. Small sample size. C. Painful for patients. D. Risk of infection. Answer, A. Capillary specimens may be contaminated with tissue fluid, altering coagulation results. Venous blood is required for accuracy in coagulation studies. Which situation requires drawing from the opposite arm? A. Arm with a tattoo. B. Arm with an four infusion. C. Arm with a bruise. D. Arm with a scar. Answer, B. For fluids dilute blood and alter test results. If unavoidable, draw below the four after stopping infusion for a specified time, but ideally use the opposite arm. Which of the following tests must be drawn without using a tourniquet, if possible? A. Electrolytes. B. Lactate. C. CBC. D. Glucose. Answer, B. Tourniquets can artificially elevate lactate levels. If used, it must be for the shortest time possible to ensure accurate measurement. Which error occurs if tubes are inverted too vigorously? A. Hemoconcentration. B. Clotting. C. Hemolysis. D. Insufficient mixing. Answer, C. Vigorous shaking damages red blood cells, releasing hemoglobin and causing hemolysis. Gentle inversion is required to mix additives properly without damaging cells. A heel stick is most appropriate for which patient? A. Newborn. B. Toddler. C. Adult with fragile veins. D. Elderly patient. Answer, A. Heel sticks are used for newborns under 1 year old because their veins are too small for venipuncture. Proper site selection avoids bone injury. A phlebotomist draws blood above and four line. What is the likely error? A. Hemoconcentration. B. Hemodilution. C. Hemolysis. D. Contamination with additives. Answer, B. For fluid dilutes blood, leading to falsely low lab values. Blood should always be drawn from the opposite arm or below the fore site after pausing infusion. Which test requires chilling on ice immediately after collection? A. Ammonia. B. Hemoglobin A1C. C. Cholesterol. D. Bilirubin. Answer, A. Ammonia levels rise quickly at room temperature. Placing the specimen on ice slows metabolic activity, preserving accurate levels until analysis. Which organization develops standards for phlebotomy practices, such as the order of draw? A. CLIA. B. OSHA. C. CLSI. D. CDC. Answer, C. The Clinical and Laboratory Standards Institute, CLSI, issues evidence-based guidelines for specimen collection, including order of draw, to maintain consistency and accuracy in testing.